had a pretty good interaction with my one video about how not all veterans are saints. So uh, I figured I'd <clears throat> give a few more stories about some other characters I ran to ran into in the military. Um, not all of them were evil per se, but they just kind of made life hard for you, harder for you in the military. I mean, it's hard enough being in the military, taking orders, doing things you don't necessarily want to do in, in conditions that aren't frankly the best conditions but I, I joined the military knowing one I wouldn't get rich and two that it was going to be hard work we've seen all the movies all the war movies um, just plain military movies about how you're going to get yelled at and, and just the, the weird conditions and, and weird people you're going to meet but it, it doesn't make it any easier when you run into <laughs> run into some <clears throat> difficult people but uh, the first guy well, one of the guys I ran into was supposedly a rich kid he drove like a Volkswagen Jetta or something a white Volkswagen Jetta you know I had a Nissan Sentra that was all I could afford uh, apparently back then Volkswagen Jettas were the thing um, I, li I didn't live in the barracks with him, uh, so I don't know, I didn't hang out with him or anything, but his story, he was, uh, I think at that time I was, uh, I was an E4, and he was an E3, and he just made it into the airframe shop, which was rare, because normally you would work in the line shack until you made E4, and then you could go into the airframe shop. Uh, but, uh, this kid, his story was, he's only got a, he, his, his parents or his dad made him join the military to teach him responsibility, and he only has to do four years, four or eight years, I can't remember, it might have been four, um, and stay out of trouble for four years, and then he'll get, he'll be eligible for his inheritance. So basically, his parents were using the military to discipline his kid uh, and, and do his job as a parent. Um, the guy, I wouldn't say the guy was worthless, but he wasn't uh, very motivated to do many things, you know. You'd, you'd like, hey, go go do this, and he, you know, he kind of drag his feet. He'd do enough, he'd, he'd move fast enough to not get in trouble, <clears throat> but he would just he just kind of made more work for everybody else. When he got out to the to the the work site or to the aircraft, you know, you're like, hey, hand me this, hand me that. All right, you know, he, it was just painful working with this guy. And of course, we had performance evaluations, but he didn't he didn't care as long as he did enough to keep himself out of trouble. Uh, that, that, you know, that's all he cared about. His, uh, his motivation was somewhere else, obviously. Otherwise, the threat of not getting his inheritance wouldn't have driven him into the Navy. So he was motivated by that inheritance and just, you know, it's kind of like going to jail. <laughs> For the most part, people in jail aren't very motivated to do anything, any more than they have to. <clears throat> and, and they do, do just enough not to get thrown into solitary confinement, you know what I mean? So that's the kind of people that are forced, in, in their minds, forced to be there, but don't, don't really want to be there. Another guy I had, um, he was... He wasn't lazy, he, he just wasn't all that bright. Uh, one, one time I was driving to work and our, our duty truck, well, every squadron has a duty vehicle to uh, either haul equipment or pick up personnel from, from places that uh, that the military had dropped. You know, like we, we would pick up new personnel from the airport and stuff. So 
uh, <laughs> drove into work and our duty truck was flipped upside down on the side of the road. I'm like, what the heck? I, well, I just saw a truck flipped upside down on the side of the road and it turned out to be our duty truck. <laughs> so I'm like, what? And it's like, oh yeah, um, I just make up a name, uh, Dan. Dan, Dan flipped the truck. I'm like, how do you, how do you flip it? You know, it wasn't icy. This was in, um, uh, this was in Virginia, uh, at the Naval, uh, Naval Air Station in Virginia. And it's relatively flat there. It wasn't snowing. It was, it was like a spring day. It, it, you know, so the weather didn't cause it, but apparently he wasn't watching where he's going. It, and the, it's flat, so I don't know how you even flip a vehicle on on flat ground unless you like, you know, cut the wheel real hard and, and going fast enough to flip it. But apparently he pulled out in the traffic the wrong direction or something like that, and somebody kind of sideswiped them, and that's how the truck flipped over. Uh, but that's just one incident, and then. You know, so they did an accident investigation. I, I don't know if you got a ticket or or what the punishment was, but um, later, um, <clears throat> kind of kind of establish where this guy is coming from. Later, <laughs> I was working on one aircraft, and the next aircraft over, you know, a couple of guys were working. Uh, on top of the aircraft too and you know they're banging and tapping and doing whatever they're doing and and it was dark we were all working with flashlights this was shore on shore and next thing I know I heard like a you know metal crumbling metal crumpling <clears throat> a yell <laughs> and then a thud um, apparently, Dan was trying to take uh, one of the work platforms off the aircraft because it had it needed some repair. Well, <laughs> there's two hinges on this work platform. I'll try to find a, a picture and, and roll it in here. But he's trying to take this work platform off <laughs> while he's sitting on it. <laughs> I mean, it's it's. It's the stuff of cartoons, you know? <laughs> kind of like Wile E. Coyote cutting a branch off a tree while he's sitting on the on the branch of the part that he's cutting off. So I get off my craft, my, um, my aircraft, and I walked over to him, and it's like, you all right, man? And he's like, oh, you know, he's just kind of like moaning. And well, and it's like, dude, don't move. Stay there. Don't move. Let me go get, uh, let me go get somebody. And he 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 just gets up. <laughs> he just gets up and and walks back to the shop. I'm like, dude, you could have like broke a vertebrae or something and really messed yourself even worse. This this kid was a tank, man. I think you know he was like a tall kid too. I think he was like, you know, yeah about six feet tall at least he was huge uh, tall and skinny <laughs> but i mean so the 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 work part for us in dealing with people like that is that they break more than they fix so then yeah they're not necessarily evil or bad or, or bad intentioned people but they're just creating more work for everybody else so then i wasn't um, assigned to the airframes or, or that uh, we were in detachments at that squadron so <laughs> whoever whoever was in his detachment ended up having to fix not only the part of the work platform that was bad but also I think he, he broke the hinge so they had to uh, replace the hinge too, and they're not always the easiest things to do. But anyway, that's that's enough for the day. To just people you meet in the military that just aren't all there and uh, aren't the most motivated people in the world. I mean, I granted, I, I wasn't 
and there were times where I wasn't that motivated either but I, I did what I had to do and you know for for the mission and, and for the team but <laughs> it, it's always an adventure <laughs> stay safe out there take care